Hey, Josh. How's it going? <coughs> Howdy. Hello. You know, with the purple hair and the red walls and the black furniture, you're giving a real serious golf vibe right now. <laughs> yep. That's what I was like in high school. I never wore anything but black. Yeah. yeah. I still wear almost nothing but black. So weirdly, I went through this phase in high school where I was monochromatic, which included white, and I ironed all of my clothing. Wow. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I really can't remember why I thought that was a good idea at the time. <laughs> but it's still the case that if we have to iron anything around the house, which is pretty rare in Oregon, as you might imagine, I'm yes. the one who does it because. <laughs> I, I do so little ironing that I don't know. Uh, well, before the pandemic, obviously, um, Paul's sister spent the night with us and he left for work before she yeah. got up in the morning and she woke up and she asked me where, where our iron was. And I was like, hmm, I know we have one because we have an ironing board and that's big. So I know where that is. Yeah. But I finally ended up calling Paul at work. I was like, I, I can't, I can't find it. Surely we have one. And he's like, oh yeah, it's in the back of the top of the cupboard behind all the cleaning supplies. Yeah, now I, never, you, I just never, ever, ever iron anything. Yeah, now that you mention it, I'm not sure where ours is. <laughs> the, um, because you know, Oregon is not exactly a big, um, permanent press state. No. The, um, um, as a matter of fact, uh, um, the, um, this, this was a joke. It was always, it was a compromise between my sweetie and me is that like, you know, we're moving to Oregon and yes, that means that you can, that means that you can wear sweats all the time if you want to. <laughs> yep. Cause, cause this is always the argument with me is anytime we we're going out, I was always, you know, putting on uh, slacks and a press shirt and everything else and looking at yep. her putting on jeans and a sweatshirt and going, uh, <laughs> Yeah, anything other than jeans and a sweatshirt tended to be overdressed in Oregon. Yeah. I used to live just off of Hawthorne, Hawthorne and 43rd. And yeah. um, my my mom really loved it when she finally figured out that like she could walk to the corner store at the end of the at the end of the block in her pajamas and she would see other people walking to get their papers in their pajamas and nobody was gonna look twice at it. <clears throat> yeah. Um the um uh yeah well and you know now thanks to covid i have an entire shelf in my closet of pajama pants <laughs> yep the um l.l bean coming out and l.l bean was l.l bean one of those catalogs came out with like a bunch of new patterns for pajama pants the um um okay well um We'll see if anybody else is going to join us. Otherwise, we can just knock this out. Yeah. Um, the um, um, and um, doo -doo -doo -doo. okay. Well, the automated recording is on. So officially, CNCF governance meeting. Um, we both know about the code of conduct, um, so no need to repeat it here. Um, and, um, the, um, if anybody, um, dials in, I will remind them to sign on to the notes. But in the meantime, um, let's go over some things. So there's the sub projects template and this is where it was really useful to have you read it blind. <laughs> because I'm like, no, that wasn't what it was supposed to say at all. So clearly that needs to get changed. Um, the, um, so, um, so let me open up the read version that, the pull request version. Oh, which I could do from the notes. Um, 
the um, so for the roles here, the idea was that. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, hold on. Um, GitHub just threw an error at me. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to look at it in my text editor then. Um, so, it is what's happening with the steering committee is the steering committee consists of and elected appointed representative from each of the member projects plus a maintainer representative who is generally elected which is which is actually a different person than the representative from each project so i think we probably need to name those clearly different things yeah because that was obviously not coming across <laughs> um the um and and how is the maintainer council different than the steering committee so maintainer council is for each project okay so so you've got you've got say five projects under this umbrella each project has their own individual maintainer council is mm -hmm. council too grand should we call it maintainer committee um maintainer group i was trying to come up with a word that would make it clear that this group had a governance function yeah um but also, yeah, the problem with it being called council is it kind of makes you think that there's something grand, that there's one and it's for the yeah. whole project as opposed to being for each individual project. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, that's a good point. I think maybe maintainer committee might be better mm -hmm. than, um, and I think, I'm trying to think of ways to, ways to sort of, solve this i think that when you when you talk about so you talk about you know members of that project's maintainer council yeah. and then you start talking about the maintainer council and so yeah so it's, think, it should say yeah that the the projects every time yeah or or each maintainer council or something to indicate that there's multiple of these yeah i think that's yeah. where i got wrapped up i was like oh the maintainer council it's a thing for the whole the whole group and then I think maybe what would help is, you know, maybe if you're just clear about the scope, like right up front, like somewhere right under that heading that you put something along the lines of there, there is a maintainers council for each individual project. And then later when you talk about the steering committee, you should say that, you know, something along the lines of the steering committee had you know, the scope of the steering committee is across all of the projects or something. Yeah. There might be some way to, I would be clear yeah. about the scope. Yep. That might help. Okay. Um, yeah. And so okay. How do you see maintainer representative and member representative is different? What's the difference between those? Two? Uh, who gets to vote for them? Uh, okay. The maintainer representative is voted for by the collected maintainers of all of the projects. Okay. And the member representative voted for the collective org members of all of the projects in the umbrella project. Okay. Um, so um, the, um, and, you know, for a template that's not completely necessary, it was something that conveyor wanted. Um, the, um, and, and I thought it was kind of useful to show as an example. Mm-hmm. Um, of, you know, what sort of a composition you might have here. And then, you know, and then I've got the note in there saying, depending on your project, you may want to have other kinds of representatives such as an end user representative or CNCF SIG representative or whatever. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I wonder, I wonder if it would be worth simplifying it because I think a lot of what I see more commonly, um, mm -hmm. not necessarily in CNCF projects, but as a community representative. Yeah. So I wonder if we well, I wonder if we say general community representative instead of both of these instead of, instead of trying to distinguish between the two of these 
Okay. And then add more details under the, depending on your project, you might have other kinds of representatives. Yeah. Okay. And then put that as examples. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, because then they can define them however they want. And we're not cluttering up the template with extra definition for things that some projects probably won't want anyways. Okay. Okay. Or we could even simplify it and not include community representative and include that down in the depending on your project section. Um, just, I think having I think having a general community representative is a good idea for this kind of project. Okay. Um, because one of the problems that you can actually end up with. Oh, hey Charles, welcome. Oh, hey uh, Charles. Please put your name in the notes. We're discussing the sub project template for projects that are sort of umbrellas over a bunch of little projects. Yeah, um, I was just looking through that. Yeah. yeah. The, um, that whole request. And Dawn very helpfully did a blind review of it, pointing out a number of things that were not at all clear. So we're trying to fix those. The um, so um, yeah, so put those in as examples. So the advantage of having the sort of generally elected representative, there's a couple of advantages of it. Um, the um, um, the main one being that one of the things that can happen in these sorts of projects where you have representatives coming from each sub project is like the problem that we have in the US Senate, where you actually have over representation of the smaller projects. Mm -hmm. And so what almost inevitably happens with the quote unquote community representative is since they're elected generally by all of the contributors, they end up being an additional person from the bigger sub projects. Um, and, and you actually kind of want that, right? Because if one mm -hmm. pro sub project has 50 contributors and another sub project has two, you want the one with only two contributors to have some representation, but you don't necessarily want it to have equal representation. And this yeah. is a simpler way to do that than maintainer head counting. Yep. No, that makes sense. Um, plus it gives you the idea of anybody who can make it to the level of org membership is theoretically, um, you know, eligible for a role in governance, which encourages people. Yeah. Um, particularly because when you have very simple maintainer committee management each of the individual sub projects, there tends to not be quite as much turnover as you'd like. Mm -hmm. The, um, okay. So yeah, and so that was the idea of that. And, and I think it works as an example, but I think you're right if we don't need to have two different classes. Yeah. Um, as in the example. Um, and if we call it a community representative, then it's pretty clear that it's not the person that we're, people were talking about for the individual projects. Yeah. So I will, I will add all those revisions in and um, squash merge. And then the other one that was confusing um, for me is down in the adding projects section. Yeah, and, and that was the languages. So what I want to say for projects meeting criteria, it needs to be consensus of the major contributors um, to the project. In, in other words, if a project is going to join the umbrella project, they need to have a consensus vote of that sub project, of that independent project, not a consensus vote of the umbrella project. The umbrella project can approve them by simple, by whatever the regular voting process is. So what, so what you're really saying is that the, um, if I run a project and I want it to be under this group, yeah. I need to get consensus for the major contributors within my project before yes. I can get to the steering committee. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that needs to be clarified a bit, but yeah. now I, now I understand because I was like, how, how does a project vote? Right. Well, cause the problem is with the project is that a lot of projects who are aiming to join don't have any defined governance structure. Yep. Yep. And but and it's also important, even if they have a defined governance structure with some sort of majority vote for joining an umbrella project and effectively joining the CNCF at the same time, yeah. majority vote is not good enough. Yeah. Right. You don't want to have two maintainers who are opposed to it and hold out and leave the project over it. You yeah. Can avoid it. So, yeah, I think I think what might make that more clear is if you if you're explicit about before before putting it in front of the steering committee. 
yeah. all major contributors of your project must have consensus that they want to join. Okay. Something like that might be better. Yep. Because I think that's what I was getting wrapped around. Like projects don't vote, but the major contributors yeah. vote by consensus to be put okay. into the group. Okay. The um, and the experimental projects thing was was okay by you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just I wanted to have a clause in there for you know the predictable circumstance where somebody has a personal project, right? And there's mm -hmm. like one contributor, and you don't necessarily want to give that governance representative uh, representation. Yeah. yeah. Um. The um. Okay. Yeah, I thought that made sense. Okay. The um, okay, so I will do all of those revisions and squash merge. Um, it'll take a little while. Put that in there. Cool. Charles, Ehor, any comments? Not yet. Not for me. Okay. Um, I'll also add. I need to look at Carolyn's headers for the website stuff. Um, cause presumably we should have some process where we approve the template for, um, before it goes in, in the general SIG. Mm -hmm. So I need to mark it as draft somehow, but none of these currently have headers on them. So I need to find out what that looks like. Um, so, okay. Um, Okay, and that'll be good because, oh, you know, general elections, maintainer committee, maintainer council, and sub projects are the three sort of major governance structures I've encountered in the world of open source. I mean, I guess my other question for this for for this group is, once we have those three, are we kind of done with our generic governance structure templates? I I tend to think so. Unless we start seeing something else. Yeah. I mean those are the three that I know of for for you know open governance structures. And beyond that, you're getting highly specific. I mean there obviously are other things with like company representatives and liaisons and that sort of thing, but it's all that that kind of stuff is all very specific to the project. Yeah. Okay, it would be nice to cross that off our to-do list. Yeah, and I thought the sample looked really good. I mean, my my comments are fairly fairly minor, aside from clarifying which people get to do which which things. Yeah, yeah. But. Well, the other thing that we need to we're going to need to do in association with this is I've been working on um, the contributor ladder thing because this one, particularly the sub projects, relies on the contributor ladder. Mm -hmm. The elections one kind of does as well. Um, and so that really needs to be published as an example. Yeah. Um, the, um, um, but that's in the other working group. So, <laughs> except the contributor ladder is actually kind of a governance document as well, particularly if certain steps in the contributor ladder give you voting rights, then it becomes a governance document. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, so I'll do all that and I'll squash merge and I'll let you know when it's when it's in there so you can re-review. Cool. Um, the other thing that I had for today is, so for the conveyor project, which is being composed as an umbrella project, um, I one of the things that they wanted to do was they wanted to allow sub projects to bring their governance with them. Um, <laughs> which meant that we needed to have a definition of open governance because they require all sub projects to have open governance. And I'm, mm -hmm. where's their definition of open governance I can point to when there really wasn't anything that I regarded as a sort of complete list of criteria. And this has also come up within the CNCF um, because I recently had to talk to a project where they had one position within the governance that was appointed for life. Um, and I'm like, that's not really open governance. And they were like, well, where's the definition of open governance? Um, 
So I was thinking it was something we should think about working on as a working group and then submitting to the TOC um, for approval because not having that definition means everybody has their own sort of interpretation. Um, the, um, so I put down the criteria um, I was using, um, you know, for, for open governance. Um, and so I'm just introducing this if people could have a look at that and add, um, you know, to see both whether all of those, you know, whether all of those criteria are necessary, like are some of them superfluous to a definition of open governance, um, whether or not we're missing things that are kind of required for open governance, um, and, and whether or not everything is clear. The one at first glance, the one thing that I don't see is anything about decision making processes, which I see as kind of a key to open governance is having a clearly defined decision making process where it's okay. it's clear who's making those decisions. I feel like it's kind of implied in a couple of these, but yeah, it's implied, but it's not clearly spelled out, which is good. So I, it seems like it would first add a clause to number one, governance structure in. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and then add it to three as well there. Yeah. I know some people are going to disagree with me in number four. The um, I'm a big fan of number four. Yeah. I mean, we've seen in Knative the problems you can have when they're held by companies. Uh huh. The so um okay. Well, I mean, give the exact criteria some thought because it's something you definitely need to think on. Mm -hmm. What I actually wanted to bring up more, you know, with you and, and Charles and Ehor is whether or not this is something we want to think about proposing to the TOC. Like, I think it would be helpful to projects to have a clearly spelled out definition of what is open governance, because that becomes a requirement for graduated status. But without that criteria, I would be willing to bet that not all the members of the TOC have the same list of criteria for what is open governance. And so then we end up with our problem that a lot of projects have complained about, right? that whether or not they meet the criteria depends on which TOC member they're talking to, yeah. um, which is, is painful for projects. I mean, I think if we say that open governance is a requirement, then we need to, we need to define what that means. Yeah. I think proposing it to the steering committee is probably the right thing to do. Yeah, okay. Or the TOC, whatever it's called. Yep. Yeah, I'll have a think on that and see if I see anything yeah. else. Yeah, somewhere in there, one of the questions I wanted to throw in there was making it clear what eligible means. Um, in that, you know, when we're saying that somebody is eligible, we're not saying that they necessarily get that status automatically there might be a process involved, mm -hmm. but just that they cannot be ineligible due to externalities. And we'll also have to carve out an exception on nationality. Because CNCF is a US-based nonprofit and so the truth is that people who live in a handful of countries are not actually eligible for leadership positions. I don't think we can add something about subject to US laws or yeah. something. Yeah. US non, yeah, something. Okay. Okay, I do this. Also uh, run this by Chris A because 
I know he was spending some time thinking about this. Yeah, he'd be a few weeks ago. So That's a good idea. Okay. So other stuff. I don't have any specific agenda items. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have any new projects showing up. Um, asking for help. We are not doing a governance thing for um, KubeCon Spring, as far as I know. The. Um, but Contrib Strategy is, is doing one. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. I considered submitting something for backstage, but then I looked at the hours and I was like, oh, don't really <laughs> want to give a talk at four in the morning. <laughs> I have a talk about governance, a well, a little bit about governance. At yeah. Backstage. I'll watch the recording. <laughs> there you go. Well, to be fair, it's pretty much the exact same talk that I gave at some other conferences. Yeah. I forget which ones, probably Open Source Summit, I think. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, this is a you know, this is a tiny European event. I'm not going to build a new talk for it. But I, if they want one of my existing ones, it should be interesting. I've never been to Foss backstage. I had never heard of it until you actually mentioned it on Twitter. So oh. the um, which is which is nice. And you know, next year when we can actually travel, I might um, submit something or even go, depending it's on how well it syncs up with Fosdom yeah. and DevConf. Yeah. An excuse to go to Berlin. The um, it would be nice because actually last time when KubeCon was in Berlin, I didn't did, get to do any sightseeing at all. Mm. Um, I took advantage of the fact that it's a three-hour flight from Berlin to Israel to see my Israeli relatives, um, but then I got no sightseeing time. Berlin, Berlin's amazing. It's got there's just so much stuff to see. Yeah. Um, the um. Well, we can dream. Um, <laughs> eventually, we'll be able to travel. Eventually, again. eventually, someday. Um, yeah, I miss it. Not gonna lie. It took me a while to miss it because you know, given twenty nineteen, I was actually a little burned out on travel. I I figured yeah. out that I actually spent over a hundred days on the road in twenty nineteen. Wow. Um. And um, so actually the first six months, it was like, wow, I can stay at home. And even now I have to admit, I'm very happy to not be in the Czech Republic right now, which, which I would be in a normal year. Yeah. Because this is not a good time of year to be in the Czech Republic. Just weather-wise, you mean? Or is there something yeah. going on? I'm paying yep. attention. Yeah. No, no, weather-wise. Yep. Yeah, well, it's like Fosdam, right? I just my butt off yeah well and, and you know uh czechia being inland is is even worse although in some ways it's worse because it's not quite cold enough so it's not all snow it's all slush yeah no my but problem course, with Fosdem is always that it's so cold outside some years that you're just you're freezing you're all bundled up and then you go in the rooms with like a thousand people yeah and then and then you're roasting. And so it's this constant. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Fosdom was never my favorite conference. Uh, no, but I used to go every year because there were a bunch of people that I would, you know, you get an opportunity to talk to people that you just don't see at a lot of other conferences. Yeah, well, before, um, so last year I was briefly considering doing the thing where you, you know, go to Brussels, but you don't actually attend Fosdom itself. <laughs> Because there were enough interesting satellite events yeah. that that I might have gone to all the satellite events and and considered it you know done. Yeah. Because um, I really don't I don't like the whole San Diego Comic Con arrangement of of the talk rooms and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Dirk about this, um, and he's like, you know, I we don't really encourage people to go to Fosdem because they don't get that much benefit out of it. But I was like, going to Fosdem is not about going to Fosdem. It's about going to all the satellite events for the projects that you're working on that hold yeah. events there. Like yeah, for yeah. me, there's always a to-do group meeting. There's always a chaos con. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, it's about all, it's not necessarily about FOSDEM, it's about all the stuff that you can attend that goes around it. Yeah, and um, Copyleft Con would, yeah. have been, would have been interesting to go to, particularly because at the time I would have tried to get them to take a stand on Cal, but the, um, but couldn't quite justify it. Yeah. Um, particularly because as things turned out, that ended up being my last chance to see my grandmother. So the um, so I'm glad I wasn't at Fosdom instead. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, well, if nobody has anything else, that is the end of our meeting for today. Um, do take a gander at the definition of open governance, see how you can tweak it, et cetera. Um, and if it if it works for you, and we'll work through it, um, probably rediscuss it at the next meeting, then submit it to general SIG contributor strategy to push to the TOC. Sounds good. Okay. Cool. Thanks for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for showing Have up. Good afternoon, okay. evening, everybody. Yep. Bye. Bye.